Thank you so much. Um, uh, let me give you a bit of uh, the motorbike situation in the region before I come in. In the northern sector of the country, particularly the Upper East region, the use of motorbikes are not a luxury, but a necessity as it forms the bulk of transportation in the region. I may not have the exact figure, but I can confidently say that over 60% of the region's population owns a motorbike and has undoubtedly become a common culture among the people. At least every household you visit in the Upper East region can boast of one motorbike. Applying on a major and town rules within my jurisdiction, you could spot children as young as 12, 13 years riding a motorbike, an indication that motor, motorbike cannot be done away with when it comes to transportation in the Upper East region. For residents and those that have had the opportunity to visit any part of the North, it is by far the cheapest and the most convenient mode of transportation. We also have tricycles also operating in the region. We have what the local people refer to as Kandu or Yellow Yellow and Motokin. But sadly enough, most of these motorbikes and those that fall in that category are not applying the route, applying the roads without riding license. It is not as though they are not privy to the fact that they need their license to work. Some blatantly refuse to go for it for reason best known to them. And quite worrying is the fact that most of the riders flout uh, road traffic regulation with impunity and are the cause of most carnage on our roads. The situation, I must say, has been a source of worry to uh, the driver and vehicle licensing authority, as well as the police. So uh, a visit to the burger office of the DVL was to find um, answers as to why people refused to apply for license and what the authority was doing to clamp down on offenders. I was actually schooled on the procedures involved in the acquisition of rider, ride, riding licenses and that of the drivers. And one good thing is that the process can begin via online application. Uh, Isaac, not, not to cut you, but what has uh, the DVLA and the police been telling you in terms of uh, enforcing the law to ensure that the riders adhere to the uh, motor re uh, regulations, I mean? Well, uh, I was fortunate to meet the regional manager of the DVLA uh, in the name of Al Rashid Mohammed, uh, who gave me some insight into the situation uh, when GBC News visited their premises. The team spotted a number of unregistered motorbikes parked within the yard. And I was told that somewhere December last year, motorists were given some temporary license in the form of chips covering the registration. These chits, as I speak, expired on January 10, and I think it was just for a period of two weeks. I was made to understand that those that are still in possession of the expired chits can be arrested by the police should they refuse to visit the office for a genuine riding license. And the dangerous thing is that the police have been made aware of this grace period, so they do so at their own peril. On the riding license, it was actually confirmed that it was indeed a national issue, and those without the license were the worst corporates when it comes to road crashes and carnage on the road, since they have little or no knowledge on traffic regulation. According to Mr. Al Rashid, those that visit the office for the riding license will be given some form of training on road safety, and he equally announced plans by the office to introduce what they call the vehicle registration system, where motorists will have their bio data taken and printed out to them for their upkeep. I was also educated on uh, the procedures that has to do with the change of ownership, especially when one buys a new vehicle or motorbike. And he said the DVLA also work, close, work closely with the customs division to authenticate okay. the validity uh, of vehicles brought from neighboring countries, including Togo and Burkina Faso. Okay, I So, yeah. Uh, 